and we welcome you to the Infinity College basketball tip off from Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville, Tennessee. The balls come through the crowd and get ready to take on the number three team in the country, the Florida Gators. As you take a look at the standings in the SEC, there's only one perfect team, and that is Florida, a perfect 10-0. Eight games remaining in the regular season. That means three and a half weeks. Tennessee trying to move into that upper echelon, and they can come back somehow and win tonight. We welcome you to Knoxville, everybody. Brad Nessler along with Jimmy Dykes. And partner, you did the game about two and a half weeks ago. It's rematch time between these two teams. It was no match the first time as Florida blew them away by 26. It wasn't even that close. No, it was not, Brad. It was an old-fashioned rear kicking is what it was by Florida, especially defensively what they did to those Tennessee guards. They were combined two for 29. The starters were in that ball game. And Florida was outstanding defending Jordan McRae. He was one for 15. Scotty Wolfkin bothered him. They did an unbelievable job of team guarding Jordan McRae. And think about this. McRae in SEC games when Tennessee he wins, he averages 23. When they lose, he averages 11. He has to hit his number tonight to stay in this ball game. The other big factor for Tennessee will be Jarnell Stokes getting his big body in front of the rim and getting on the offensive glass. Well, when you look at that first game, you look at the defense by Florida. The field goal percentage for Tennessee and the three-point shooting for Tennessee, the second best ever of a Billy Donovan team against an SEC opponent. This has been the Infinity Tip-Off. Now let's take a look at how our coaches have fun with fundraising in the Infinity Coaches Charity Challenge. It is Super Tuesday in college basketball action in the SEC. Part of Rivalry Week presented by Wendy's. The SEC on ESPN. We get set for Florida and Tennessee from Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville. Balls being introduced with the fireworks inside the arena. And we get to our one-on-one -on -one Jimmy, one of the good shooters in college basketball and one of the good defenders. Our one-on-one -on -one brought to you by AT&T Digital Life. Well, Scotty Wolvigan is one of the best point guard defenders that we have in the college game. As a spot-up defender this year, Brad, he's been involved in 55 plays. And on those plays, the shooter is only shooting 29%. So he does his work, he wins the battle, and he's there on the catch. He's up against tonight an outstanding shooter in Jordan McRae. Jordan McRae, as a spot-up shooter this year, he's been involved in 101 plays where he's a catch-and-shoot threat. He's scoring over one point per play on those type of situations with an adjusted field goal percentage of 50%. So we have a terrific spot-up defender checking a terrific spot-up shooter. That might be the tail of the game right there. And with more on those two, third member of our team, Shannon Spake. Shannon? Well, Brad, Scotty Wilbekin told me the way to defend Jordan McRae is to not let him get going early. That is exactly what they did when they played just over two weeks ago. Held him to five points, one of 15 on the entire night. McRae told me yesterday the thing he remembers most from that game is how disruptive this Florida defense was. He told me his entire team went back and watched the entire first half they learned from it now today McRae was the first player here about 30 minutes before everybody else got here for shoot around he was working on his perimeter shots I asked him how things were going how he felt he just looked at me smiled and said it's all good it's all good the number five score in the conference for Florida a senior laden group with the exception of Frazier Wilbekin Frather you get and Patrick Young and for the balls of Conzo Martin Here's how it looks. Darius Thompson, the freshman, now running the point with McCray, Richardson, and then two great rebounders underneath in Jerron Maiman and Jarnell Stokes. So Tennessee, 11 and 2 at home. They've won three of their last four. Florida on a 15-game winning streak. Don Daly, Joe DeRosa, and Joe Lindsay's got the ball in hand. And we're set for the rematch from two and a half weeks ago. And it'll be Tennessee first out of the box. Jordan McCray telling Shannon prior to the ball game, it's all good. But there's a big difference when you're saying that to Shannon Spake and when Scotty <laughs> Wilbekin is checking you. Things aren't always that good. And that's we will the find out right now. Here's Maiman double team down low. Stokes, he draws a double team too and trying to pass out of it. It's knocked away by Frazier and hit the basketball. Backboard and out of bounds to Tennessee with first, 13 on the shot clock. We had the first two post touches. What does Florida do? They trap the life out of you. That's who they are. That's their aggressive nature. Stokes almost walked with it. Now he's forced to take a jumper and he hits it. 
Boy, they take that any day from Jarnell. He's taking and making about one per game from that 15-foot mark. Here's Prather. Tough spin move inside. Comes out to Wilberkin. And he got caught in midair, took the shot, and drew the foul. Billy Donovan, the elder statesman, not necessarily by age, but tenure in the SEC. 16 consecutive 20 win seasons. Conzo Martin in his third year here in Knoxville. Brad, in Gainesville, Tennessee's on ball defense did not allow them to have a chance to stay in the ball game. The opening possession, Florida Don Billy Donovan goes to the pro slot on ball action, and Tennessee can't check it. They go right at Jarnell Stokes to start the game. And again, suffocating defense, but Gray almost stepped out of bounds. Maiman in low. Everything seems to be a double team right now. Jimmy, and that was the first Tennessee turnover. Wilbekin going the other way. And it's stripped a little bit by McCray. And it's going to come free to the Gators. That Florida. What's the blueprint to beat them? We don't know yet. This is only one of eight teams in the country that's in the top 25 in both offensive and defensive efficiency. They have no weakness yet. They have not been exposed. Young goes strong against Stokes. Got his own miss. And the hook shot still coming out. Well, another try. But a walk by you get. That showed the power of Patrick Young, but he couldn't connect underneath. Well, you're up against a Tennessee team that's best in the SEC, getting 73% on the defensive glass, and Tennessee gets 41% on the offensive glass. Wilbekin knocks it off McCray and out of bounds. Good defense by Wilbekin. That's what Jimmy was just talking about a couple of minutes ago. We have a similar matchup coming after our game tonight with Aaron Kraft guarding Nick Stauskas. You have an unbelievable determined point guard defender taking on a terrific scoring two guard. And Wilbekin is dynamite in every area of the game defensively. Here's Frazier. Too strong on the three. And trying to keep the ball alive. They've got a foul. Uh, Patrick Young. So Florida goes to its bench as Dorian Fetty Smith, who's actually the number one rebounder for Florida, on the floor for the first time, and you get will get a seat. McCray again has it stripped by Wilbekin. Ahead to Frazier. He's going to be fouled. Or they're just going to say knocked out of bounds by Thompson. No foul. Or well, Scotty Wilbekin, I'm telling you, he, he, his feet always move him to the right spot. And he doesn't melt on screens. He actually becomes more intense when he goes over the top of all screens, Brad. You better not mess around with this kid. Here he is offensively. Kick out to Frazier for three. Got it. A good late find by Wilbekin. A power drive completely under control, knowing, trusting the offense that Frazier was going to fill the pro slot behind him. Frazier, the number one three point shooter, and 43% on the year as he knocks down number 66 on the season from outside the arc. Tennessee trying to answer that one short. And again, trying to get the offensive rebound, and Stokes steps in the line. Remember, Tennessee scored 41 points the last time these two, these two teams played. And the reason why Florida's so good, even early in this game, they're trapping the post, they're down in any action on the side, making it very difficult for Tennessee to do anything on the outside drive for the baseline action. We talked about how good Tennessee is on the offensive glass. Florida already has five offensive rebounds, and they lead by four. No foul underneath, and no call on the second try. So it'll still be Florida ball with 12 to shoot. Partner, that's a sign of a mature team, and Billy Donovan starts four really cool seniors. And you can challenge guys like that and say, you're up against the best rebounding team in the league tonight. What are you going to do? Well, Florida has delivered the first two or three blows in that area of the game. Yep. Benny Smith. And McCray will clear it. 
for Tennessee. Antonio Barton now playing the point. He started a good majority of the season before the freshman Thompson took over at that spot. Stokes faces up on Yagett's going to take the jumper in and out. Maven. Wow, he powered one out of there. And then lost it anyway. Three on two, Florida. Frazier scores on the other end. How good was that? A pocket pass on the move by Wilbekin through traffic, delivered right at the numbers. And Florida jumps out to a six point lead. See, there's nowhere to go. Look how Florida floods this side of the floor in their down action, and Tennessee can't get it reversed quick enough to make them pass. Another Wilbekin steal. And an easy lay in. Timeout, Tennessee. Wow. What a defensive start for Scotty Wilbekin. He's picked Tennessee's pocket three times already, and they lead by eight. So far, Jimmy, through a little over four minutes, you were right on the mark about Scotty Wilbekin's defense. Well, watch Scotty Wilbekin. Your feet can't get in position if your head's not out in front of the game. So this kid mentally, he knows on that on-ball action where Tennessee's trying to go. So he's thinking already one or two passes ahead. Therefore, his feet are there meeting you right on that play. He moved his feet. He got his elbows back. He got his hands by his ears. No foul. And he rips and runs to the other way. Turnovers have led to Florida points easily. And again, Tennessee still looking for his first good shot. When you take away the exception of the one Stokes had that he had to take with a shot clock winding down. It's winding down again. McCray for three. Way out and got it. That'll help the Tennessee offensive cause a little bit. Slow developing play, though, by Tennessee. Stokes took two or three dribbles to get out of the double team. Frazier with the answer on the other end. Frazier's got eight already. You notice McCray got that three-pointer with Wilbekin on the bench last trip. And the balls have to work it around the perimeter. Nothing on the inside so far. McCray got a pick from Stokes, though. Got another one. Now, Brad, you're right about Wilbekin not being assigned to McCray. It's not so much that Prather doesn't have the ability to guard him, but in McCray's mind, he knows it's not Wilbekin. So the shot looks a lot more confident coming off at the top. And it goes back to what Shannon talked about. Don't let number 52 get off early. They didn't let him get off early until Wilbekin went to the bench. But don't give a shooter a couple of good shots like the last two trips, or you could have trouble. Got a foul in the lane with 14.03 remaining. And Florida on the road up by five. Florida leading by five. 14.03 remaining in the first half. Lord McCray, last couple of trips got good looks, Jim. Brad, he's the guy. He's shooting 46% from three. Hold it right here. Boom. When you reach down, you're going to allow Jordan McCray to get distance and step into his shot. Off the ball screen action, McCray and the ball are the problem. Forget about what Stokes is going to do as an on-ball screener in the roller. You have to get out and make sure you challenge McCray and can't give him easy looks. Scotty Wilbur can watch both of those plays when he checks back in. Now Jordan McCray knows the guy is back on me. Jordan McCray already off to a better start than the entire last game when he was one for 15 and as a team. Tennessee off to a better start from three-point land. They're two out of three. They were one of 19 the first go around. Prater at the free throw line. And this is an area where Florida does not excel from the stripe. And somewhere down the line, whether they become a number one seed or not, that could come back to bite them. Right at 66% in conference play, and that number has to get at 70 or above. That's the difference in four or five points in tight ball games. Yep. And now full court pressure again from Florida. Casey Hill gets Barton to pick up his dribble in the backcourt. Florida will trap you if they get you going on an out of control speed dribble up the side. That time Barton stayed under control. Here 
Here's Richardson trying to get it inside to Stokes and can't. And he'll take a fadeaway jumper from 18 and got it. Well, the grand little power basketball Tennessee did that time, Brad. A tight flex action, just trying to enforce maybe their physical size on floor. And now Tennessee looks like they picked up the intensity of their defense a little bit. Well, you're going to have to drive it if you're floored against the Tennessee pressure. They start pressuring you, spread the floor, and drive the ball. Benny Smith on a runner and throws it down. Spread the floor, drive the ball. Tennessee can't. They're not used to extending. That's not what they do. They only get four steals per game. Get them out of their comfort zone, make them pay. Wow, and it was two strides to the basket for Dorian Benny Smith on that flush. How many teams in the country have a guy this talented checking in off the bench the ball fake sold it and then one bounce and two big steps and the hammer on top of you a terrific ball fake got the defender to stand up straight mm. and uh, aj davis not used to take on a, a cat this quick with a basketball from 20 feet out Got good position down low, but Young's right on his hip. And he's got to give it up. McCray on a runner. Got it. He's hit three straight. And that time it was over Wilbekin for the first time. Yeah, you're not going to have success as a spot-up shooter against Wilbekin because he's there on the catch. you got to score off the bounce. And another three-pointer. This one by Devon Walker. Oh, every time Tennessee makes a run, Florida just spreads it right back out, leading by seven. Well, they got Thompson on a speed dribble, and that's when they try to choke the life out of you. Thompson, I think, wanted to call a timeout and got rid of the ball instead. Richardson for three. Now we got a shooting contest going on right now. Well, Brad, you have to make Florida pay for doubling down on the block. You've got to get a quick reversal and fire up shots with confidence. Wilbekin in traffic, kicks out Finney Smith. That three won't go, and Maven with a rebound. Tennessee a chance to cut it to two this trip with a lob, and they throw it away instead. Already six Tennessee turnovers in this first half. Hill will try a little teardrop inside. Florida trying to drag Maimon and Stokes out into that sprint out ball screen action, making them move around. McCray, well, he got fouled. Didn't get a great look at the shot, but he did draw a foul, and he'll go to the free throw line as Walker picks up the foul. Just over 11 to go in the first half. My partner with a little demonstration when we come back. Jimmy with a golf club. What's that about? Four! <laughs> stance is critical in any sport and really an athletic stance carries over from one sport to the next in golf it sets up your golf swing in baseball it sets up the baseball swing in football it sets up the quarterback before he throws the football in volleyball at the net athletic stance go up and get it and in basketball the power dribble the defensive stance but it all starts with the same stance wide base strong is quick especially on the basketball floor all right, partner, you got it all covered. Here's Scotty Wilbekin doing his imitation of Jimmy Dykes. Yeah, well, his stance is a little better, a little stronger, a little faster than mine. This is why he is one of the best defenders in all of college basketball. You know what? Before I did that demo, Billy Donovan came over and talked to me about, you know what? That's one of the most important things in coaching that's so hard to get our guys to understand. They will be in a stance when they're guarding the ball or when they have the basketball. But once those two things aren't happening, the college player likes to stand up. And Brad, before you can move, before you can be quick, before you can be fast, you got to get back down in that stance to allow your feet to work. I think Wilbekin, the kid coming up after our game, Aaron Kraft, they probably understand that stance for 40 minutes as well as anyone. People it's, talk about playing without the ball or away from the ball, but defensively, you forget about that sometimes. And that stance is it, it, it's critical. It sets up every aspect of the, of the biggest parts of of all of sports out there. You look at the Olympics right now. Downhill skiing, what are they in? They're right. an athletic stance. Yeah. Curling, them dudes up there brushing. Hey, you got a good athletic stance going and curling? You can brush now. 
You got a bad stance? That's not good. <laughs> Wilkin, now the drill against Stokes. You get trying to back in. He goes baseline and loses it. Nice defense, but Florida gets it back. And Prather. Maiman saves it with another rebound. Well, Tennessee just doesn't turn the ball over. They're shooting 75% in this game. They're getting a, either a great look or turnover so far. See Chris Walker pick up his first foul. Freshman only in his third game for the Gators. So Brad, you, you go right at Chris Walker if you're Tennessee. He has not faced a physical front line so far in the first two ball games. You move him around and you see where he is as a defender. And Maiman goes up against him, but walk first. Check in with Shannon. Well, when I asked Chris Walker about coming on his very first road trip here to Tennessee, he told me, well, it sure isn't a high school game. He looked around. Big place for him to make his first road trip. But he said, you know, I've gone up against Patrick Young in practice. He's a strong guy, but he knew that the two bigs here for Tennessee would be a huge challenge tonight. Maiman drove on him last time. Here's Yaget's going to try a three. And nice follow through by Will Yaget. That's only his fourth three-pointer of the year, but it looked pretty good all the way. Brad, it all started with Chris Walker. So you bring a guy in, and now he's even faster, boom, in the sprint out ball screen action, and then his rim run underneath. That play started with Walker's action on the ball. McCray missed that one. And it's going to be a walk on Walker. Watch Chris Walker. The last offensive position, boom, sprint out. Sprint Chris, Sprint Chris. We heard that multiple times in Florida's shoot around today, getting this kid to understand the, the urgency that's needed at this level. Sprint out ball screen, set it, and sprint hard back to the rim. That's I mean, what he does best. Yeah, I was going to say, if there's one or two things he can do is he can run the floor and he can really get up. And for right now, that's all they need him to do because they had pretty good chemistry already. They just added another weapon to the arsenal once he gets comfortable out there. I got this one. Oh, yep. Last time that happened, I had a Levi Randolph in my lap. Yeah, you, Levi did that to you twice. Now, coming up tomorrow night, more hoops on ESPN. 7 o'clock, undefeated Syracuse takes out Pittsburgh in the ACC. And then at 9, staying in the ACC, Duke and Carolina on Tobacco Road. Wednesday night hoops, part of Rivalry Week, presented by Wendy's on ESPN. And watch ESPN. Two good ones tomorrow night. Hill got an open look for three. And it's going to be a foul on the rebound, and that's going to be on Casey Prather. So the closest Tennessee has been was three. The last trip down court. And we're under nine minutes here in the first half. Already both teams uh, showing better offense than the first go around a couple of weeks ago. Maiman, nice look underneath to get it to Jerron Maiman. Brad, they went right at Chris Walker. They intentionally drug him up into a ball screen. He got on the wrong shoulder, and therefore the outside drive was available. Frazier out of control. Out the pass to McCray. He's going to run with Stokes and take it all away. Woo! Jordan McCray. Billy Donovan says timeout. Tennessee has cut it to two, and boy, did they do it in style. First, they got a turnover, and they ran with it. Well, this cat was one for 15 in Gainesville, so you know he comes in locked and loaded. But he's a long arm guy, Brad, a 7-2 wingspan. He makes a lot of these shots around the rim, and I think that is a hashtag SC Top 10 nominee. If it's not, <laughs> we've had an unbelievable night. <laughs> Now, I'm not sure that Jordan McRae is going to be a pro, but what you like about him, he's a 7-2 wingspan. He has a size as a 6-6-2 guard. And, Brad, he's shooting a high percentage from three. McRae is. Yep. I'm not in love with his elbow when you watch his shot go up, but it's going in at a good rate right now. What I don't like about him projecting him to the ne next level is I think you can knock him off of his path because he still doesn't weigh but about 185 pounds, both on the offense and the defensive end. Six. But that was a spark 
to this build. No doubt. 6'6 senior out of Midway, Georgia. And he's got 11 points. Four out of five. Hit a couple of threes. And as Jimmy said, maybe more importantly, lit up Thompson Bowling Arena with that jam on the other end of that break. And it's made it a two-point game. And how about our group in the truck? All 11 points so far not being guarded by Wilbick. We're going to have a foul underneath. It'll be on Davis, A.J. Davis. And so Casey Prather is going to go back to the free throw line. And I don't think you can overreact to Florida on the offensive end. What I mean by that, Frazier and Wilbekin are your proven three-point shooters so far. Everybody else has not been a consistent three-point threat, especially this kid at the free throw strike. Prather's going to catch it, two bounce you, and get to the rim. Back off and make him a jump shoot. He's only got one three all year. And you get who hit one earlier. Only had three before that. It's been this guy and Frazier that have done the work from outside the arc. And again, some full court pressure or three quarter court by Florida. And McCray trying to get away from Wimbledon again, this time on the dribble. McCray knew not to get the ball on the sideline. That's when Florida gets a, a, a saddle on you, speed dribble you, and now you're in trouble. Well done by McCray. Richardson from the elbow. Got it. Josh Richardson, he's got eight. He's been struggling to score a little bit recently. 7.49 remaining in a two-point game. Florida in front. And Shannon will talk to Conzo Martin when we come back. All right, Chris, 24-22. Good ball game, 7.49 remaining. Kind of a slow start for Tennessee, but they poured it on. And Shannon talked with Coach Martin a moment ago. Coach Jordan McRae missed some shots early, but they are going in right now. How has that affected his focus as the game's gone on? Well, he has to keep his confidence. He's a good score. He just got to take care of the basketball. It's the biggest thing. Be aggressive off the bounce, but can't lose control of the ball. Offensively, where have the breakdowns come in the eight turnovers? Well, they've made a couple threes. And Frazier, we can't let Frazier get that open three, but a couple guys made threes that are uncharacteristic. We'll settle for those, and we'll deal with it later. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Well, those two uncharacteristic threes came from Yaget and Walker, but... Eight turnovers. Florida scored 10 points off them, but right now Jordan McRae with 11 points. The ball started off one out of three from the floor and had five turnovers, and they were down 10 to two, and it looked like it was going to be a repeat of a couple of weeks ago. But, Jimmy, they're eight out of nine from the floor since, and they're right in the thick of this thing. I thought it was interesting yesterday. Conzo told me when we left the O-Dome three weeks ago, lost 67 to 41, but when we got on the bus, no one felt like we've got no shot the next time we play these guys. They saw something in that game that they felt like we can correct and make this thing a ball game the next time. Here's Patrick Young inside. Well, if you can get something out of a game where you're down 32, that's good coaching and that's kids that have confidence that they can bounce back. And they have certainly bounced back here tonight at home. Florida hasn't won here in Knoxville in three years. Nice move by John L. Stokes. Now Arnold's got two out of that. Frazier double team. Penny Smith has to kick it outside, set on the shot clock, and a walk by Florida. Good defense by Tennessee. Brad, in the first ball game, Stokes was, was too slow. When he would catch the ball, the double team would come. Now he's catching it, he's reacting, and he has terrific footwork for a kid that's about 265 pounds. Watch the catch. Boom, the quick spin, very quick shoulders, and very quick feet. That time led him to the other side of the rim. Not messing around with a double team. And the officials checking something at the scorer's table. Not quite sure what it is with 6.33 remaining unless it's a clock issue. You know, the most storied conference in college athletics has a brand new network in August 24-7, the SEC Network. Go to GetSECNetwork.com and demand the network from your TV provider. Out 
Opportunity for Tennessee to tie the game this trip with just under six and a half to go in the half. Stokes will try to tie it. And he got it. I said he makes and takes one a game. Well, he's already made two 15 footers. First tie of the game. Tennessee's battle back from eight down. Wilbekin to regain the lead. And it's McCray with a rebound. Jordan McCray pushing it through traffic. And now Richardson for the lead. And the battle underneath. And I think it's going to be Jarnell Stokes with a foul. Going to draw a reaction, a negative one from the crowd. Tennessee's playing a really good pace in this game. When it's been in the half court, they've ran some flex. They've kind of gone to a power game at times, trying to grind away on Florida. And when they do have the opportunity to run, they've been blitzing the floor. So Wilbekin not playing the point here. It's Hill instead. And Wilbekin at the two guard. Here's Frazier. Had it blocked around a screen. Nice defense by Tennessee. McCray slicing in. And the rebound will be Finney Smith. Wilbekin, quick move inside. Throws up a prayer. Now Richardson going the other way. Moore. And he's going to the free throw line. Now's going to be out. Pat Young is second. So back to back possessions. Tennessee really doing a good job, Brad, of, of blitzing the floor when they run to offense, followed up by punishing drives. And that was a body blow drive by Armani Moore. Gets himself to the free throw stripe, but you have to have punishing drives against a team as good as Florida. Armani Moore, another Georgia native out of Kennesaw. 6'5", sophomore, misses the front end as Young with two fouls may stay over on that Florida bench the rest of the half, and Yaget comes back in for him. Kept alive by Stokes. McCray for the lead. Stokes, another manly rebound. First lead of the game since it was 2 nothing for Tennessee. Frazier will try to quiet the crowd, rimmed it out. Moore with a rebound. Inside, nice finger roll by Barton. It's not easy to get on ball action against Florida because that's who they are and they normally guard the life out of it. But they fell asleep and allowed a downhill drive. Wilbekin will take a three again. Missed the last two and Stokes has another rebound. Well, that's exactly what Tennessee had to have happen because Wilbekin had a mismatch. A four and a five were out checking him and he settled for a quick three-point shot early in the possession. Barton, turnaround jumper, knocks it down. I'm telling you, they are dialed in in terms of when to run, when to shoot quick, and when to grind it out. A very good offensive half for Tennessee against an unbelievably good defense. Wilbekin thought about another three and didn't take this one. You get try to back in on Moore. And he's fouled in the lane. Billy Donovan, seeing his team having an eight-point lead, it's evaporated in a hurry. They trail by six. He'll be with Shannon when we come back. Hi, Chris. Florida. Seen their lead evaporate, and Tennessee's gone on a 10-0 run the last three and a half minutes. Shannon talked with Billy Donovan a moment ago. Coach, looking at the last five minutes of this game, what would you say has gone on with your team? Well, I think we've settled for some long shots, which is... Uh, you know, we had some good action towards the basket. 
And to be honest with you, we're going to have to finish plays. You know, if they're going to let the game be this physical, then we've got to finish plays better than we're finishing around the basket because our guys are going to need to go up through contact and make shots. So you told me today defensively you have to make them miss the shots, not hope that they miss them. You did that early on. How do you get back to it? Yeah, no, I think that we let McCray get loose on a couple, and he made two, and we let Richardson get loose. They've made some tough ones, but we've done a pretty good job. i got to give them credit because they've made some hard shots. Thank you, Coach. Bill, I gave a little shout out to how the game is being officiated right now as well. Absolutely. And what he's talking about is my concern for where we're at in college basketball, Brad. We are a long, long ways from the new norm in terms of what if, how we officiate this game. The inconsistency from one game to the next, from one half to the next, in terms of what is viewed as freedom of movement and what is viewed as basketball plays, something that coaches are still trying to figure out. And possession arrow will keep it in Flora's hands. On the tie-up. Good defense again. Some quick hands by Tennessee. You heard Billy tell Shannon they've made some hard shots. And that's what good defensive ball clubs make you do. And Tennessee's made four or five of them so far in this game. Wilbekin trying to lean in to the defender to get some room. Tennessee's ice in the action as well, not letting the floor to turn that corner and get to the middle part of the floor. Prather takes a step back, and he knocks down a three, and he is not a three-point shooter. And Florida's spacing kills you. They kill you because the on-ball action's occurring on the other side of the floor, and the far shooter is at free throw line extended opposite. They space you as well with a spread action as well as anyone in the college game. Boy, if Gonzo Martin says some guys hit some threes that we're not used to, he's going to be worried about that last shot. That was Prather's second three-point shot that he's hit all year. But again, you don't over-respect Florida's non-shooters. If they stick them, they stick them. Here's what I'm talking about. The action is being iced, so what does Wilbekin do? He knows the far side free throw line extended will be filled. That's the spacing that makes it so difficult to recover to. So Conzo seen Prather and Yaget hit a three. And as he said, we'll let those guys shoot. Yep. And now a foul is Wilbekin trying to get to the basket. And we'll have a one and one coming up. Foul on Barton. And that's his first. That's another on this end of the floor. Now Florida with their version of a punishing drive by Wilbekin. They empty out the same side of the ball screen. And when that happens, if you're Tennessee, you have to talk and make him use the screen and cannot allow the outside drop. And Wilbekin missed the free throw. You saw his numbers last time against Tennessee, 13 points. Last Super Tuesday, he hit 13 free throws in a career-high night. But he misses his first attempt this evening. Here's McCray. Oop, get it out. That one was halfway to the bottom. Under two minutes. Prather was going to try another one out there. Instead, he works inside and a nice reverse layup by Casey Prather. That's more of his style. Brad, same thing. The ball screen was set. There was no action underneath. Therefore, you cannot allow the outside drive. Prather read it with two dribbles. Bam, he's at the rim. McCray catches and shoots. Second time, one was in and out. A good tight curl action by Tennessee playing power basketball against Florida. Prather had it rejected by Maynard. Fort Walker making defend. Stokes double team. And Walker knocks it out of his hands out of bounds. Still Tennessee ball with exactly a minute remaining in the half. And 22 on the shot clock for the Volunteers. Brad, when I say make Walker defend, not just on the low block, but go at him, make him move, make him cover action. There you go. There it is. You make him prove right now that he's ready to play at this level as a defender. He has not had the test yet so far against Missouri and Alabama. Prather got away with a travel, or so it appeared. Wilberkin backpedals and airmails a three to the other side. 
And it'll still be Florida ball. What did Billy Donovan tell Shannon? We've settled for too many quick perimeter guarded shots in this game. Wilbekin just took another one. So 38 in the half, 20 on the shot clock for the Gators. And they have a foul on Walker. Again, trying to set a screen, and in this case, a moving pick. Well, that, you're starting to see where Chris Walker is right now as a player. Because the on-ball action for Florida is a staple of what they do. And he doesn't get set, and that's partly on Wilbekin. Wilbekin has to be patient, knock the defender off, and wait for that ball screen to get set and then explode. A learning experience tonight for Chris Walker. But you know what? He has to go through this right now yep. if Florida's going to be a legitimate national championship contender. One three one out of Florida and size up top with Prather and you get man in the middle. Virtually no difference on the game clock and the shot clock. It's about point three maybe. The concern is Wilbekin down there as a low block. Yeah, that's, that, that would be the concern of this defense in this game. You got your six two point guard as a back line of the defense. You throw the ball to Stokes and let his power take over. You got your 160 pound point guard. You got your 260 pound guy on the other side. <laughs> And no matter how good your stance is, <laughs> or how good your base is, exactly. or how quick your feet are. He could have been doing the splits Absolutely. and it wouldn't have mattered on that Guy one. with the headband is going to win yeah. that battle. 16 and 10 the last time wow. around for Jarnell, who leads the SEC in double doubles with 13 and 31 in his career. And averaging 14 points and 10.3 rebounds. The only guy in the SEC that's averaging a double double is the big fella. Out of Memphis. Tennessee with a chance to tie with a three or cut it to one before halftime. And Wilbegin does cut it to one before halftime. Yep, that's why I say he's as good as any point guard in the country, Scotty Wilbegin. That kind of play right there to close out a half. That Jordan McRae, a much better night. More than twice as good as the first time around with 11. He leads the way. Tennessee at home leading by one. As it's time for the Mazda halftime report, we head back to the studio. Chris Cotter, Seth Greenberg, Jay Williams. Guys are standing by. Fellas, it's all yours. And it's the SEC on ESPN. All part of Rivalry Week presented by Wendy's. And these two rivals going at it for the 126th time. And it's a one-point game at halftime. Tennessee leading by one. They trail by eight. Welcome back to Knoxville, everybody. Brad Nessler and Jimmy Dykes. Nice run by Tennessee. They played some good inside-outside ball. Got a lot better shots than they did two and a half weeks ago in these two teams. They did. They already have 34 points. They had 41 the last time they played. Brad, as a player, I think it's important to ask yourself this sometimes. What do I not like to play against? And then go be that guy. Well, Jordan McCray has been that guy as a two-guard in this ball game. He's been active. He's been fighting for his spot when he's been around the rim. He's been very good coming off of curls, and he's been a very good defender. He's been active. So what's hard to play against as a two-guard is a 6'5 guy that's active, and he's curling tight. He's making tough baskets, and he's playing with a lot of personality. That's what Jordan McCray has done so far in this game. Well done. And for a team that shot 27% the first time they got together, Tennessee at halftime, 63% from the floor. Here we go, second half. Florida did go on a 7-2 push in the last three and a half minutes of that first half to make it the one-point game it is right now. Here's McCray. And that shot blocked by Prater. Loose ball pickup by Thompson, and he misses off the glass. Brad, see the difference in Tennessee's on-ball action? When they reverse the ball, the shooter is too close up top. And Wilbekin got it off the window. And so to open the half, Florida goes back in front by one. on Scotty Wilbekin's ninth point of the game. Stokes, short, armed it, airmailed it. Maybe you should have kept the headband on at halftime. See, I told you he can make 15 to 16 footers. He took a 17 and a half footer and it came up a foot and a half short. <laughs> Jarnell decided to go without the headband and who knows, maybe that's a problem. Why would you do that? He was good in the first I half. Know, with that headband on. That's some nice defense by Richardson, but the ball came free to you get. 
And you get a chance for a three-point play. What a strong finish by you get, knowing that the contact's going to come. And young players would have tried to finesse this thing at the rim with one hand, and it would have been swatted the other way. Here's where you get trying to finish off a three-point play. And got it. You get with six. McCray on the run. Finger roll with the left hand. It's dangerous to press Tennessee because of his ability to make hard, difficult, long arm shots around the rim. It's almost like letting a shooter loose on the back end of the press. Hook shot inside by Patrick Young. A good read by Young because initially, Brad, he was trapped and he felt the pressure leave him and got his shoulders into the shot. So good open to the half by Florida to regain the lead now by four, a couple of minutes in. And Maiman walked with it. Let's check in with Shannon. Well, Billy, Billy Donovan told his guys inside the locker room, look, they made some tough twos. We can live with that, but we can't have defensive breakdowns. Obviously, defense, a, a main focus for Coach Martin as well, specifically dribble containment defense. He said, you got to keep your guys in front of you. And as far as that headband, guys, it fell off with that first possession. I thought about going out there and getting it for him, but um, I don't know if the refs would like that very much. Probably not. Maybe he'll pick it up on our first TV time. Oh, it's back on now. There it is. Martin got it. said, put this back on, big fella. And Wilbur get inside, doesn't get the roll, but he does draw the foul. And it's going to be on Thompson. Here's where Jarnell lost it right there. You get helped him a little bit with a shoulder, and then he, oh, he went to try to find it. I didn't realize that. I thought he pulled up a little bit because he hurt himself. That was just looking for where it ended up on the floor, but he's got it back in the right spot now. Good decision by Stokes. Transition defense is always more of a priority than the headband. <laughs> That's just good coaching. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And Wilberkin from the line after missing one in the first half knocks down two there. And what are they from the free throw stripe tonight, Florida? Are you, what, 66% coming in? And yep. A higher percentage than that tonight, seven for nine. That's terrific. Boy, Florida is quiet at this crowd by jumping out to a six point lead here early in the second half. I expect Tennessee to try to go back to some power basketball. That's what got him in the lead in the first half. There's the power. Inside against Yagets. Darnell Stokes showing some good movement underneath. Brad, he's not messing around with that double team. He's catching it and he's making his move. He's not waiting for the monster action to come or the back trap to come. Because there you see Florida, they, they, they try to, to, to back trap the basketball. The guard's going to cut through, and then that's what sends the guard to double down. But that time Stokes was quicker than the back trap. Darnell, 10 points again so far tonight. His only free throw he missed, but he knocks that one down. I gotta give him credit. A couple years ago, he was a terrible free throw shooter. Even up to last year, he was 57%. He's about 70% right now from the line. So he has worked hard from the free throw strike, and he shows it there, knocking down a pair. He wears you out from the waist down. He's one of the better offensive rebounders in the country, fifth overall, I believe, because his body from the waist down carves out the space, and then it's easy below the rim rebounds for Jarnell Stokes. Wilbekin double teamed, almost lost it. And a walk. Good job by Tennessee's defense. Seemed like every pass Florida had a little trouble with, and then they end up turning it over. Absolutely. It's not easy to make Florida go too fast on the offensive end, and that's what Tennessee's pressure just did. So Maiman to inbound, and again, Florida will try to apply a little bit of pressure again. Nice job by Tennessee to break the press. And Barton's going to go all the way in with a finger roll. Nice job by Antonio Barton. I think Billy Donovan is trying to get the pace of the game going right now with his pressure because he's been burned by it twice, but he's staying with it. He knows this thing can't be a grinded-out game on the road for Florida. Great. 
Carter trying to drive against a triple team, and he threw it away. McCray had it knocked away. Richardson for the lead, and off the front of the iron. Has to give it back up with 15 on the shot clock. Good job by Stokes because Florida changed the angle late on the ball screen action and Stokes read it, sniffed it out, and leveled it off. Wilbekin again runs out of real estate. Benny Smith thought he's going to have to shoot soon. It was him, it wasn't a good one. Tennessee takes it right back. And now Stokes inside missed the dunk, but he will go to the free throw line. With 15.38 remaining, Tennessee can tie it with a headband back on. He's playing like Darnell Stokes again. <laughs> a line will be drawn. Turf will be defended. Emotions will erupt. The rivalry is all that matters. These wicked games that we play. These wicked games that we play. At least can sit next to each other through the game. Right now, Darnell Stokes can tie it again. And we've only been tied once at 26. Florida started both halves on 10 2 runs. The second time getting up to a six point advantage here early, but Darnell Stokes has just tied it up at 42. Right, Darnell told me. About three weeks ago, his, his, his body percentage fat is, is at like a 6%. He's very alert, he's very active, he's very lively, has a lot of pop in his legs in this game tonight. And a whistle and a foul. Wilbekin's going to go to the free throw line. And Barton picks up his second foul. Always ask your question. You know, who, everyone out here wants to win tonight. Who hates, who, who hates to lose? And right now, Jarnell Stokes is kind of, his body language tells me that he is dog determined. Speaking of that body, how do you get it that way, Shannon? <laughs> well, you guys, I asked him that question about losing weight and just kind of trimming down. He told me it was yoga. He said he, he actually took a page out of Kevin Love, his book from the Minnesota Timberwolves. His off-season regimen included yoga, and that's what Jarnell did every single day in the summer. He hasn't been able to do it since, but that is what did it. Maybe you guys, should, we should all start doing it on the road. We could try that. My football crew, everybody but me, does that on Saturday mornings. I've got other things to do. I've got a lot of homework. Absolutely. I, I can't tell any difference if you doing yoga and not doing I, yoga I can't when either. I see you. <laughs> McCray again, double teamed by a big and by Will and He's still got it off the window. Another hard shot. Billy Donovan told Shannon in the first half they're making hard shots in this game. And that's another shot that I call a 22% shot. That's the rate that it normally goes in. Patrick Young with an answer on the other end. His second hook shot off the window. Well, the urgency of Young to run and plant right in front of that room with a deep post touch. Jordan McRae, the kick out. Barton, a triple. And Wilbekin will clear it off. Barton's got to start making shots. That's what he does best. And when that three-point shot's not going, some other areas of his game aren't the best. And the collision between Stokes and Patrick Young on the other end. And that's three on John L. Stokes. So he's going to come out. And this will become a smaller lineup by far that Conzo Martin's got to go with here. Yeah, their offensive rebounding just took a hit because he's getting over four per game. And his big body bound around the rim, Florida has really struggled with in this game. Hill. They move it around the perimeter. Wilbekin had an opening for just a moment. Well, how good was the recovery speed by Tennessee? Because they were in a bind a couple of times in that possession already. A.J. Davis got over there in a hurry. Ten on the shot clock. Here's an open look. And a three goes. 
by Walker, and that's his second one tonight. Again, an odd guy to be shooting the three, but he's knocked down two of them. Walker hit one three all of last year, came in with eight tonight, and he's hit two more. Brad, he, Billy Donovan feeds confidence to his guys in terms of shooting the ball probably about as well as anybody in the college game. A lot of dribbling. And they end up losing the ball because of it. In Florida, they're down in the action. They're flooding the ball side of the floor, making you play in traffic and make passes in traffic. 11th Tennessee turnover, a costly one as they trail by five with 13 to go. When you go inside, don't you? The Stokes on the bench? I would. Young's going to try to go over Mammon. He did. Had it halfway in. And we're going to have a foul on Wilbekin. That normally I describe players as being hard to guard tonight. It's Billy Donovan. Why is his offense so hard to guard year in and year out? The sprint out ball screen action is lethal. He brought it into the college game. He feeds confidence to his shooters as well as anyone we have, and he demands fast action. He demands the ball to move quickly. He demands his guys to move quicker. Those three areas to me kind of sum up why Billy Donovan and his offense are hard to guard, and he does it every year. Sometimes it's from three, sometimes it's around the rim. This year, they're more of a power team around the rim. And you better play full blast defense or you won't be on the floor either. Yeah. McCray missed badly on that jumper. That last foul, by the way, was not on Wilbekin. It was on Patrick Young. And that's the reason he's sitting over there right now. So now it's an equal-sized game. Right. Neither team has an advantage. This is a guards game, a perimeter game right now in terms of personnel on the floor. Hill on kind of a funny runner with a left hand going to his right. So 11.53 remaining. A fired up Jordan McCray will be at the line when we come back. The Gators looking for their 16th straight win. Lead it by five with 11.53 to go. Jimmy takes us inside the play. Well, they're not letting Jordan McCray have a lot of breathing room right now. Six hands is what Billy Donovan kept talking about in the shoot around. When McCray has a ball, here's one set of hands. You get has a set of hands. This backline defender, they're all showing their hands to Jordan McCray, not letting him come this direction is the idea with the icing action. And well, that's a good job to, you know, get over there leveling him off and not let that ball come to the middle part of the floor. But it's all starting with McCray seeing six hands when he has that basketball. A lot of coaches will say, I want, it, I want him to see three sets of eyes. Billy Donovan says, no, I want him to see six hands. Hands action, discouraging McCray getting to the rim. He had six for sure, maybe eight on yeah. that drive before the timeout, so he'll go to the free throw line. But you know what? McCray was still determined enough to take the ball where yeah. he needed to go, wasn't he? And he was talking to the officials, too, before he went to the free throw line, kind of gesturing as if to say, you know, they're all over my hands. <laughs> but he knocks down the free throw, and he has 16. I talked about the... This kid is a future pro. I'm not in love with his elbow. Watch how that right elbow gets out initially. See that? That's not how you teach it. But he's shooting a high percentage, even with a bad elbow. 45% yeah. from three in SEC, 40% on the year. So at the end of the shot, it all looks good. That's what an NBA scout will look at and see. What's the top of his shot look like? And he almost never misses free throws in the final four minutes of a half or a game. And that could really help the cause somewhere down the line. Frazier on a runner had it knocked out of there by Armani Moore. Richardson got no man's land up in the air and threw it away. And coming the other way, Barton will foul Hill. That's three on Antonio Barton. Yeah, you're not going to be able to punch a gap against Florida's defense initially. They're, they're too good. They're going to be gap sound, they're going to be pressuring the ball, and again, they're going to show six hands. And you have to know that initially. 
And Hill goes all the way to the rack this time. An extra gear, doesn't he? He does. He can really slice to the basket. Freshman. McDonald's All-American. That's his first basket. And a whistle and a foul on the inside. Well, our journey to the tourney continues tomorrow. Clash of the ACC, C.J. Fair and undefeated Orange take their perfect record on the road to take on the Panthers. ESPN's journey to the tourney, Syracuse and Pitt tomorrow night, 7 o'clock on ESPN. Also, live on Watch ESPN. That'll be a dandy. There's what those two teams look at, or look like, I should say, right now. You know one of the things I love about the ACC, they have five teams, I think, in the top 20 defensive efficiency ratings, and they have a variety of different looks. Teams coming out of that league this year in March will be well prepared for no matter what defense they see, and that's very important. And now Hill, again, showing the speed. Going coast to coast, up and under, and foul. Well, there's the other gear Jimmy was just talking about. Yep, and that's the depth that Florida can put on you. And this is pretty much the backup point guard. He's playing the primary point now with Wilbekin at the two a lot of minutes. But watch this. When he decides to go, boom, there's a blow by by Thompson and then a blow by against the long arm defender of Richardson. Didn't connect on the three point play, but he has given his team their biggest lead of the second half. Where the court just looks different without Stokes on the floor. That's the problem right now for Tennessee offensively. They don't have that anchor inside that they can go to. Almost the midway point of the half. And Tennessee in a little bit of danger here down seven. McCray again trying to shake Wilbekin. He did get to the rim, but couldn't get it off the window. Continuing to make Tennessee take hard shots. Yes, they've made some, but they're also having to take a lot of them in this game. John L. Stokes coming back to the scorer's table. They need him out there. And with the timeout taken by Florida, he'll be able to get back in the game when we come back. 9.46 remaining in the ballgame. Jimmy, what do you see? Well, I see the St. Louis Billikens. I believe in them. First of all, their defensive efficiency is only topped by Arizona and Virginia, and they're also only fouling 14 times a game over the last three or four ball games. That's going to be huge in the NCAA tournament when John Adams gets controls of his officials and the games really tighten up. What I love about Duke, think about this, Brad, their adjusted offensive efficiency right now is 128.6. That's the best offensive rating we've seen in the past 12 years, according to the Ken Palm ratings, and I trust those guys as much as anything. An unbelievable offensive team. You know what else I see? Keep an eye on the ACC. The reason why I say that, five teams in the ACC are on the top 20 in adjusted defensive efficiency. That leads the country right now in terms of the number of teams coming out of a power, power league that knows how to defend. Duke, Syracuse, Virginia, North Carolina are all Sweet 16 good. The ACC is not the best conference we've ever had, like we were told in October, but they're very good right now. Here's some very good defense by the freshman Thompson, and Stokes tips it in. There's the energy, the effort, the determination, and the I hate to lose body language that I continue to see from Jarnell Stokes. Crowd is trying to help out right now as well. That's a 1 3 1 by Tennessee. They put it in after they played at Florida because Conzo Martin felt like he needed something else to go to to win hard games. And another turnover. This one by Prater. Good job by Maiman, the senior down there with the quick hands. And Tennessee's got an opportunity now to make it a three point game again. In that timeout, Conzo Martin says, Here's our 1 3 1. Remember, this is what we want to do for it. Let's see how Florida tries to handle it. Not well so far. Stokes. One hand hook, and he's going to get it back. And he wants it back. Here he is on the drive. A little runner won't go, but he will go back to the free throw line where he's been very effective tonight. And I like the fact that he didn't settle for that 15 footer. He's made two in this ball game, but that's not his strength. He was a one-way strong driver that time, Brad. Didn't try to spin his way out of traffic and throw up a bad shot. And Darnell working on another double-double. Three rebounds shy right now. 
He's done a great job at the free throw line until that one. I knew when he shot it, he missed it because his head was bobbing back and forth. As soon as he released it, he knew that had no chance. That head's got to stay locked in. He's the number two active rebounder in the SEC. Only to Patrick Young, who's on the other side for Florida. The head's moving, the target's moving. A missed opportunity there by the Volunteers. Crater, that's three turnovers in a row by Florida. And Richardson missed a slam, and it goes up and over the shot clock. Can't blow opportunities like that. Oh, almost, you almost want to write it down right now. 8.09, Tennessee had an easy run out, and they don't get it down. The 1-3-1 one, one is doing its damage to Florida. on the dribble, and he's going to take the jumper. Prather goes right back up with it. And now the battle of the boards, won by... It'll be Florida on the tile. 7.38 remaining. Florida on the road, trying to go to 11-0 in the SEC, up by five. All right, Chris, thanks. 53-48 right here, the remaining unbeatens in conference play. And Florida, one of them at 10-0 with eight regular season games remaining. Well, seven more for Tennessee and Florida when this is over. Yeah, critical stretch for Florida. Four out of their next five on the road in this league. And those guys in the studio talking about Wichita State. The national coach of the year, it should be Greg Marshall from Wichita State. He's 25-0, coming off of a Final Four appearance. He's gotten everybody's best blow since November, since they first tossed it up, and they're sitting there at 25-0. Now, he's not going to get it because he doesn't say the right things. He has a little bit of an edge to him, and he's not out politicking for the deal. But in terms of who deserves the national coach of the year tonight, Greg Marshall from Wichita State is the guy. Sounds like you, you know? I don't say, the, right you say the wrong thing, get an edge. The whole thing. <laughs> Love that team. They will be unbeaten at the end of the regular season. Ten on the shot clock for Florida. Wilberkin's going to put it up off the window. And the rebound. Again, the battle in this one is going to be won by Maiman. He just out muscled you get. Yeah, it's not easy to out effort Florida, and Tennessee's done it a handful of times in this game. Under seven to go, and still a five point Florida lead. Richardson goes straight up with it. And again, Maiman battled Young, and this time Young won the rebound. Wilbekin rejected by Stokes. Tennessee needs to quit taking hard shots in this game. They've got to make four to work and get that ball around the rim. Well, he tried to get it down to Maiman, and he lost the handle. Richardson to three. Got it. That, that's not a hard shot. He's making 50% of threes in SEC play. And Conzo Martin wanted a timeout after that big three and got it. I said 50% in SEC play. He's actually 50% over the last four ball games. But, you know, Wilbekin does the right thing. He attacks and a long arm defensive play by Richardson on one end. And at the other end, Jordan McRae attracts the attention, and all, all Richardson needs is a step because he's 6'6", the little bit of a late recovery by you get, and now we've got ourselves a ball game again. I go back to the miss that Tennessee had in the wide-open transition a couple of minutes ago. Remember those two points when we get under a minute to go. That's the difference in the ball game right now, 53-51. And don't forget, you're going to see the Gators again this weekend. Saturday primetime presented by DirecTV. Casey Prather and these Gators take on Julius Randle and the Wildcats. Florida and Kentucky, again, part of Rivalry Week presented by Wendy's. And that's at 9 o'clock Saturday night on ESPN. Jimmy talked about it. Four out of five, including tonight's game, on the road for the Gators. And when you consider the four road games, they're coming up against division opponents who are 17 and four at home. So good teams on good home floors. And they're in the middle of a battle here. The first of those four. 
Wilberton again going to the rack and again missing. And on the tie up, it's going to Tennessee this time. Some maiming muscle. Well, he gets the 1 3 1 on Florida. They're finally getting some strong, determined, punishing drives. They're just not finishing it off. The second part against the 1-3-1 is climb all over the offensive glass. They did that, but Maiman again, below the rim, his power, like Stokes, can tie you up and take the ball away. And there's trouble. The freshman point guard in the backcourt got trapped and was forced to take a timeout. As soon as you relax and you start playing like a high school point guard against Florida, you're going to either turn it over or have to take a timeout, and that's what Thompson did. That's the second or third time Thompson has picked up his dribble, and that's a freshman error. Let's take a look at Florida's BPI heading into the game, brought to you by Audi. Basketball Power Index rank is an ESPN BPI ranking and uh, proceed, uh, projected to be a number one seed along with Wichita State, Syracuse, and Arizona right now. Yep. I would I would put Florida up there in first class in my jet. Now, the problem with Florida in this game right now, Brad, they, they're 0 for 5 on the last field goals. They've had three turnovers, and that's going against that 1-3-1. One, one. So McRae's going to wait on Thompson. As we approach five and a half minutes. Stokes tried to get it to Maiman. Came right back to him. And did get it to Maiman. And he missed him close. Can't miss him. Four points that Tennessee should have in this game right now. Stokes would like to do it himself, but he's got guys draped all over him. McCray. Short. And out of bounds to Florida. Another challenge shot taken by Tennessee. They cannot settle. They cannot bad, bad shot or quick shot their way to a victory against Florida. They're too good defensively. It's a two-guard set, but they're really having a hard time reversing it up top because of how high Thompson's playing at the top, Brad, plus he's long on with six, at 6-4. We're under five minutes in a two-point ball game. And an air ball. This one by Freddie Smith. But Florida's got another chance. And Wilbekin's going to take it. Another bad three. And they're going to call a foul on Richardson. The problem you have when you've put in a 1-3-1 one, one zone defense over the last, you know, three weeks, and you haven't played it but only about a seven-minute stretch against Alabama, now the back end of the possession becomes a problem. The boxing off, the securing the rebound, and ending the possession, Tennessee has not been able to do in this defense. I'm not buying that last foul. No, I'm not either. At any rate, Fenny Smith hits the front end. Got them both. He's got four. And the lead is four. Here's Stokes. Long oh. hook shot. He got it. Wow. The shot that he could not make last year because he didn't have the explosion in his first step to do it. And Shannon talked about how he's worked on his body. Watch this. Boom. He lowers the dribble. He lowers his, his center of gravity right there. Boy, that, that is a big boy shot. At the end, he got his shoulders squared up. That's a good look by Jarnell Stokes. Fourth foul on Patrick Young, too, and that could become a factor in the last four and a half minutes. There's a three-point play for Jarnell. 19 for Stokes. One-point game, Florida, four and a half to play. Conzo Martin and his core playing for Gene Cady is a man-to-man -man defensive guy. But right now, the 1-3-1 one, one might get him the victory that he needs right now for that NCAA tournament berth. Majority of the folks at Thompson Bowling on their feet with 10 on the shot clock. Wilbekin in tall timber. Not a good idea.
Now Conzo Martin screaming out the instructions from the volunteer bench. Now this will be Stokes and Maiman. It's a, a two-man game eventually after the screening action. There's Maiman. Lost it in, in low. Bad time for a Tennessee turnover. Frazier for three. Got it. Boy, that's a dagger by Michael Transition is especially Frazier and Wilberton. That's where they kill you. That's the third three of the night by Frazier. None bigger than that one. And now who's got the answer for Tennessee? Well, the Frey's been quiet, but there's a reason for that. 52 and 5 are the guys. That's McCray and Stokes. Give him a touch. There's Stokes, but it's away from the basket. He'll take it anyway. Had to, really. It was five on the shot clock. Florida trying to escape with another win. And Billy Donovan says, let's talk this thing over right now with 2.48 to go. Brad, if you're going to battle for a, for a championship, and Tennessee's trying to hang in the SEC race right now and get an NCAA you know, resume win. Can can you make winning baskets, winning scores down the stretch? Right. I, Tennessee hasn't shown me their ability to do that all season long in crunch time, in clutch time, in pressure time. How do they get baskets? It's kind of the question that I'm sure Conzo Martin has right now with his staff in that huddle. Well, Florida's 4-0 on the road in SEC play, and everybody else in the entire conference has lost at least one, if not more than one. So they've proven that they can do it in a hostile environment, and they're trying to survive this one right now at 2.48 to go. Well, you know, great teams fix the problem right now. The problem for Florida is the 1-3-1 zone that Tennessee's thrown on them. They have not fixed that problem yet, but they might have enough in terms of toughness and tenacity on the glass to get second rebounds and get fouled and continue to try to, you know, ice this thing away. A ton of work to do, but again, can Tennessee score baskets in crunch time? You know what? It's kept them out of the NCAA tournament the last couple of years. Yes, it has. Losing close ball games because they couldn't score. Last year they were 20 and 13, but 11 and 7 in the conference, and then they lost in round one of the NIT for many of the reasons Jimmy was just talking about. Nice overplay by Richardson, who almost got a steal out of it. Ten on the shot clock for the Gators. And as he's back to man-to-man -to -man on this possession, it might be just one possession of it. Wilbekin for three. Off the window. Pretty sure he didn't call that one. But it gives Florida a seven-point cushion again. Florida's ability to make winning baskets can be matched by Tennessee. And this one contested by... Finney Smith, and that will send Jarnell Stokes to the free throw line when we return. But Wilbekin with a huge shot here. Banks in a three. All right, Chris, see you in 207, barring overtime from Knoxville. Want to give a special thanks to our viewers for contributing record donations during ESPN's Jimmy V Week programming in December. More than 1.75 million was raised. And we certainly thank you, and so does the V Foundation. Jarnell Stokes at the free throw line. And he's missed now three of his last four. When the second half shooting woes for Tennessee against Florida continues. In game one, they shot 26% in the second half. In this game so far, they're at 28%. That's Billy Donovan's defense just continuing to tighten down and make adjustments as the game goes on. Again, there's only Florida one of, one of eight teams in the country that top 25 both offensive and defensive efficiencies. What went on in the Florida huddle, Shannon? Well, it was Scotty Wilbegin who spoke up the most, guys, and he said just what you said, Jimmy. Defense. This is all about defense. The coaches said, guys, we have to get three consecutive stops. That's our goal. And now they're using clock. It's Wilbekin on the dribble. He's not afraid to go inside. Second time that he's come up empty. But two on the shot clock for Young. Whoa. You think these two teams don't want wow. it? There's bodies all over the place. You talk about big boy senior effort out of Patrick Young. The four seniors for Florida are cool kids. The kind of guys you want to coach, and they're into two things, Brad, winning and defense. The play by Patrick Young is a winning play. Well, they got a fresh shot clock out of that hustle, and now they can take it down under a minute, which they will. 
Wilbekin doesn't want any extra defender on him, just wants to go one on one. And he leaves it for Hill. And again, they get the offensive rebound. And on the hustle, trying to come up with a loose ball, going to be a foul on Tennessee. I'll go back, look at Patrick Young. When you talk about one of the exceptional senior leaders in the college game, lays himself out, because really, Tennessee had an advantage when that ball was about six feet out in front of everybody, and he just blows it up. Blows it up with his effort, gets rid of it before he slides out of bounds. A winning play, a winning effort. Show it on the film tomorrow, and you tell your guys, this is why we got a chance to win the whole thing. Our seniors are invested in winning and defense first. Wilbekin, who basically wrapped up the Missouri game a week ago tonight on Super Tuesday from the free throw line, might have an opportunity to do it again. And he's hit five straight in this half. He had a career high in that game of 19, and he's won two free throws, shy of that right now. Patrick Young just looked at us and said, ain't no way I wouldn't come up with that ball. <laughs> And the second one goes as well, and that's really an uphill climb. Eight-point deficit. And they still won't give McCray any room. He's going to take it anyway. And now you get with a rebound. And there's only about a four-second difference on the shot clock, and the game clock is Maiman with the foul. He's going to send Wilbegin to the free-throw line again. We're at the top of the show, I talked about the numbers of Scotty Wilbekin as a spot-up defender. It's almost alarming how good he is. But he's checking McCray. He's fighting through ball screens, and now it's an isolation spot up right here. Boom. Challenges a shot, doesn't foul. And Scotty Wilbekin continues to, in that type of a play, the guy is making about 29% of the time. And he's going to like Super Tuesday being around him. If he hits his free throw, it'll be back-to-back -back Tuesdays of career-high points. And more importantly, would give his team a double-digit lead and not a lot of time left. He doesn't get the second one. He does tie his career high. It is the biggest lead of the ball game of nine. And McCray trying to lob it down to Maiman. Tough catch. And the foul is going to be on Patrick Young, and that'll do it for him. But he's already done his heavy lifting for the night. So Patrick Young's going to fall out with six points, but the hustle and the rebounding and the defense he provided tonight, he didn't have to be a scorer. Ready to go back and watch this game. The, the, the number of hard shots that Tennessee either settled for or had to take in this game. I say it all the time. Basketball really is pretty simple. The quality of shot that Florida got tonight overall is better than the quality of shot that Tennessee got. Yep. Tennessee now finds himself it seems like every year, the last two years, they're either on the last row of the jet or they're on standby or they're trying to get through security, and that's where they are again. Joe Lenardi had them as one of the last teams in before this game started. And now the three-pointer goes by Richardson, but it's probably going to be too little too late, although they do get a timeout with 22.3. They're going to make Florida make free throws. Two-possession game. Now the pressure's on Florida. Inbounds the basketball. You'd love to get it to your better free-throw shooters, but you have to inbounds the basketball and then cover it up knowing that the contact's going to come. Well, Frazier's their best free-throw shooter, and Wilbekin, certainly in a clutch, has been that from the free-throw line with the exception of the last one he missed. Don't forget, prime time on Saturday at Kentucky. And if this lead holds up, Kentucky's still going to be two games back regardless of what they do tomorrow night. That one's Saturday on ESPN. And then it's Auburn at Ole Miss. That won't be easy. At Vandy, never is. LSU and South Carolina. And then Kentucky again to wrap it all up. And then the SEC tournament in Atlanta. The last time they started this strong, 21-2, and two, was 2007. They won the national championship. The second straight national championship. And Wilbekin fouled again. And if you want to see more of a bulldog, determined, tough defender as a point guard taking on a scoring two guard, then the next game has the exact same matchup. It was Wilbekin against McCray in our ball game, right. and then Aaron Kraft against Nick Stauskas coming up. I think you're going to see a whole lot of that on our air for the next two out. New career high for Scotty Wilbekin, 20 points. And again, he did a lot of the damage, not only from the free throw line, but that three that he hit 
sort of off the back of the rim and off the glass. That was that was the last dagger for Tennessee. Now there's, there, there's not a point guard that I would rather have on my team than Scotty Wilbekin if I'm trying to win a national championship this year. Because of his toughness, he's now a proven three-point shooter. His ability to lead a team. I remember, you and I watched him when as a 17-year-old freshman, right. Billy Donovan threw out there into the fire guarding some of the better guards in this conference. And now I trust him as well as anyone in the college game in terms of getting his team to that final four. He actually entered school as a 16-year-old, and by the time the basketball yes. season started, he was 17. And we thought, he's going to be a pretty nice little player. Well, he's a lot more than that right now. He's the definite leader of this team. So the balls are going to fall to 15 and 9 and 6 and 5 in the SEC. And Florida's going to remain perfect at 11 and 0 and 22 and 2 for the number three team in the country. That is win number 16 in a row. And the fifth consecutive SEC road win, which is a school single season record. Florida had their moments where it looked like Tennessee could maybe get them here in Knoxville, but they survive it. And the 16th win is 67 to 58. Don't forget, coming up, Michigan takes on Ohio State. Right now for Jimmy and Shannon, Brad Nessler saying so long from Knoxville, Tennessee. We're going to check back in in the studio with Chris Carter and the guys for a studio update.